What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be doing an overview of my newly upgraded The Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party 2.0. No! It's crazy to see what I made three years ago to now. It is a thing of beauty. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> it's crazy how this hobby started three years ago and to see it go through all of its changes and basically making me want to buy a real pinball machine man it's been an amazing three years but before we begin into this whole overview you know the deal if you're not following me on all the socials what are you waiting for be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You would see everything, all of the behind the scenes stuff, my personal life, me disassembling and tossing the original 50 inch cabinet. You would have seen everything. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Also, be sure to hit the like and then hit the subscribe and then the subscribe thing should have glowed because if I said the word subscribe, it glows. Be sure to do all of that. What are you waiting for? Go, follow. <laughs> Now I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet, but you know me, I like to talk and then I go off tangent. That's just how I am, that's just me. That's my personality. But again, on this one today, we were doing an overview of my newly updated, it's honestly, this is its final form. Three years from when this started till now, I strongly believe this right here is probably what you want to see in a virtual pinball machine. No extra BS, no insanity, no 8-7 screen. You don't need all that. Again, it's also crazy to see how this hobby started three years ago. And what it is now is not like what it was before. I'm not talking about like just, you know, the cabinet alone. Stuff has been updated. We have new screens. We have 4K. We have OLED. We have 120 hertz, 144 hertz. Everything to make that ball look extra smooth and buttery, let alone now all other add-ons and toys such as addressable LEDs and stuff. Wasn't like that three years ago. <laughs> it's, it's crazy where it is now. I think the best way to start this video is let's talk about the basics. Let's talk about the newly upgraded V-Pin. Then we'll go into other stuff such as why I even did this upgrade and kind of my little journey. Again, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. There will be another video of a full detail, full force, full me talking your ear off video. Just me doing what I normally do. But again, to start off, we're going to talk about what my original cabinet was. If you are new here, it's three years since I started this virtual pinball hobby that then turned into a real pinball hobby. It's been great, but it has been three years. My original cabinet was a 50 inch Samsung 60 hertz screen, 32 inch back glass, and a 22 inch DMD with DOF. I didn't have a complete DOF setup, but I had the most important parts such as 10 solenoids, beacons, strobes, LED underglow, uh, what else did I have? <laughs> that was probably honestly it, and also the analog plunger. Uh, and surround sound force feedback. Now though, I've done a couple of upgrades. I think the best upgrade, the biggest upgrade I have to say is this is a whole brand new cabinet. My original cabinet, like I mentioned, was for a 50 inch screen. That was number one, my first ever hand cut, hand built cabinet using MDF, which I will never use ever again. Uh, that whole cabinet, just by its size, I actually had to toss it because the new screen that I have now, which is a 42 inch C3 OLED, 4K, 120 Hertz display, obviously the 50 inch cab was just too big. Let alone what I learned, cutting MDF I never will do because the amount of dust that stuff makes is probably toxic. Uh, <laughs> not to mention the weight. MDF weighs a lot. That was the biggest thing. Have you seen even me doing my V-pin streams and all that? I had a big issue nudging. And nudging MDF, it's heavy. It takes more effort. It takes more muscle to nudge. 
Yes, I did go into the whole Pinscape software and even VPX, I should say, and I upped the tilt and the nudge sensitivity to make it more realistic, but honestly, nudging MDF wood is a nightmare. I, I don't advise it. Now again, going back to this, I have a whole brand new cabinet using my laminated birch. I do that for all my customers, and I'll be honest, when I was building customers' cabs, I was like, damn, I am missing out. <laughs> that is number one, the biggest improvement. Laminated birch, it is strong, it is sturdy, and it doesn't weigh as much as MDF. There is weight to the cabinet itself, but definitely nothing compared to MDF. MDF is like a tank, and this is like, I don't know, a, a car. Is that, did that sound right? <laughs> Now again, aside from the 42 inch C3 OLED 4K 120 Hertz display, the other add-ons that I did that I felt I really needed, number one, shout out Eric, Big E Productions. The biggest thing I needed was my custom side rails and my custom lockdown bar. Because I'll be honest, and people did make comments about it, I had that 90 degree like L channel angle metal stainless steel stuff. Even though I rubbed the corners and I rounded them, it still kind of hurt the palms, but now with his lockdown bar, custom dimensions and everything, I am now able to gain in comfort four hours. <laughs> Aside from the side rails and all that, I did add a shaker motor. Yes, I wasn't really gonna do it, but it wasn't that big of a, I should say it wasn't that expensive of an upgrade. So now I am running a shaker motor. I do have a controller knob in the rear. And probably the last, well, I have one more update, but the biggest other upgrade is I do have the LED matrix along with the LED addressable side rails and the speaker grill. So that was a great thing. And the last upgrade I did, I do now have glass. Plexiglass was an awful idea, not to mention it scratched very easily when I went to go clean it. Avoid plexiglass. The glass probably seals the deal. Now, yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I did keep the same vinyl artwork. I didn't keep the same vinyl. I had to reprint the vinyl, yes, but I did keep the artwork. The Simpsons is childhood to me. I haven't seen it recently, but The Simpsons is it's just childhood to me. Not to mention, again, I, I have this thing where I usually don't like to get rid of my first ever built cabinets. You know, x nay the V-pin, because that is gone. Uh, but I didn't want to change the artwork. I could have changed the artwork. I wasn't really, you know, hard set on what artwork I wanted. I said, you know what, just to have a little piece of originality, I'm going to keep my, my artwork. So yes, I still do have the Simpsons virtual pinball party vinyl slash artwork on this. It is not the same vinyl. <laughs> the vinyl went with the cabinet when it was tossed, but yes. Now again, building V pins for other customers. I've learned the number one, you don't see it, but I definitely cleaned up the wiring a lot since my first ever build. Again, my original build was kind of rushed. I wanted to complete it for my birthday, my 30th birthday. Now I'm 33. Yes, my wiring is much cleaner. Not to mention when I was building customers' cabinets, I had extra features such as I had the opportunity to turn off the solenoids and I have the opportunity to turn off the LED matrix if you or me or a person playing it is not a fan. Again, if you, if, if, what I what I learned three years ago versus what I know now, it's just crazy how the hobby has changed. Number one, it's kind of stupid now because everybody's like, oh, OLED, you shouldn't get OLED burning. Oh, oh, bur I have customers that had their OLED cabs for two years now and there's no complaints. So don't be that type to be like, oh, I should avoid OLED, no. The biggest thing though, you definitely want 120 Hertz plus. This right now, again, three years ago, we didn't have 120 Hertz. We didn't have OLED. I don't believe three years ago, at least we didn't have V-pins that were OLED. Um, but that is number one, the, probably the most important thing is to be sure that you're running 120 Hertz. Alongside that, you do need a good computer. You need a good PC. Again, like I mentioned before, what I had three years ago versus now, it's gone through several upgrades. The screen alone is one thing. It's also gone through a whole new PC. My original PC was running a 2070 Super. Once I started doing the streaming stuff, I started to notice stutter. Now I do have a 3070 in this. And man, I'm able to stream and play with ease. 
Now, just to reiterate and re-say what I said as far as if you didn't understand what the upgrade entailed, I do have, number one, a whole brand new cabinet. I do have a whole new screen here. The Playfield screen is new. The addressable LEDs were an add-on. The shaker motor is new. Glass and the custom side rails and lockdown bar, along with another reprint of vinyl. Everything else came from my existing cabinet. The PC, the solenoids, the, the RGB police light flashers, the beacons, my Homer and Bart, my back glass, my DMD, my surround sound feedback, my regular sound setup. That was all stock and also strobes. I should say strobes too. That was all from my past cabinet. Now, why am I saying this? Some people might look at this as a simple upgrade, meaning it probably didn't cost that much, right Vic? I'll be honest, you're probably looking at around maybe $1,500 to about $1,800 just in hardware parts alone for this upgrade. What? what? How? It doesn't, your math isn't adding up. The screen alone, before taxes, and I got it on sale, it's $8.99 for the screen alone. So just keep that in mind. So some people would just kind of have this idea of, I already have a cabinet, I just want to do a couple upgrades. Stuff costs money. <laughs> Not to mention the biggest thing, I already had the PC. If I had to make a whole new PC, that would have went up probably another grand to $1,200. Now alongside just the basic upgrade itself, VPX has been updated to now 10.8. Man, it's been an upgrade, but when it comes to these upgrades and updates, there's more work. Basically, they're trying to get it to be more realistic. And with that, there's more work to be done. I posted a couple of videos kind of teasing this. For example, Futurama, I'm loading this up because it's a new like table that was just made uh, probably about two or three weeks ago. You probably kind of get it like washed out on screen because I have the ISO up, whatever. Uh, but basically some people are like, oh man, your play field looks flat. 10.8 now has this whole thing where you could actually adjust like the incline and the layback. But with that means extra work, meaning you have to launch each table and adjust it precisely. Basically, not every table translates it. You can't just copy and paste it. You would probably have to launch each table. Uh, but really, I'm launching Futurama number one to show off the LED matrix. I did something that I definitely loved about my original cabinet, and that was keeping my screen flush against the glass. I'm not a fan, people have it, it's a-okay. I did it for Hogwarts, or you could put the screen kind of indented and all that. Again, like I said, I posted it to like the virtual pinball builders group on Facebook and people were like, ew, flush, ew. The biggest thing is that all the newer stuff, it, it, they're making it more real and they're also adding side art blades. So I kind of think it's kind of silly when you have a table that has side art blades and then you have a gap of just emptiness and then like your matrix or your, I just don't like the gap. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. You build your cabinet how you want. I built it like how I want it. So aside from having the play field flush against the glass, I actually also did the LED matrix in the rear flush against the glass. Now technically, I am not flush against the glass. I do have my angled, it's, um, it's a 90 degree angle channel, but the LED actually sits 45 degrees. I do have my LED side rails here. So it's basically TV, LED side rails, and then the glass. The play field and the matrix is as close to the glass as I could get. The biggest thing, I just like the flush look. That's why I did it. And also, I've never seen anybody do the addressable LED matrix in the rear flush against the glass. And honestly, I think it looks awesome. This right here, you can see Futurama. It's got kind of like the starry black and uh, blue and white effect going. I can't really see on the camera if you could even see that, but I will pull you closer. Again, like I mentioned before, I have this switch here where in case I'm gaming and you don't like the LEDs, you could always switch off the matrixes. So in the rear, I have two switches, one to turn off the solenoids. Previously, I had it turn off the entire um, same smart board. So that would turn off my beacons, my strobes, the flashers, everything. Now I changed it where it's just gonna turn off the solenoids, the 10 solenoids. And the second one is to turn off the LED matrix. If you don't like the LED matrix, turn them off. Now I'm gonna do kind of player view here. You can definitely now see the LED matrix. It is awesome, and as you can see, I have this matrix edge to edge. It is kissing right up against 
the actual play field screen. Uh, it's, it's a thing of beauty. It's great. Uh, the 22 inch DMD, I love it again. I was using my original hardware. Another person was like, ugh, that, that DMD is just too big. It's too big. Look at a table such as this that is utilizing that DMD for stuff other than numbers slash score. This has video going on and all that. I know it's a little washed out on camera because I have the ISO, but you kind of get the picture and the idea. Only thing, honestly, this here, um, probably the one thing I, I, I would redo, but I have a ceiling height issue. If I actually bring you up and I kind of show you like the Homer and the Bart, I only have like two fingers that's above Homer's head that I have of open space. What am I getting at? Basically, the panel here, this DMD panel, this is new. My previous build, I had plexiglass that would hide my speakers, my strobe, and my uh, red flasher, my police strobe light flasher thing. Um, if I was gonna make the back box a little bit bigger, I would have been able to basically bring my plexiglass forward and hide my LED addressables inside the speakers better. That's probably the only thing I would change, but unfortunately it would not fit. It, it just, it, I only have a very small, uh, you know, open space. If I took this DMD panel out, if you saw the rear of it, there is no meat on that. It's very, it's a very thin thing. I probably could have done more if I did like poster board, but I got it working. It's CNC cut. You don't see anything. You can't even see it. There's a speaker there and all that. But basically I'm gonna relaunch like Simpsons and you'll see hidden behind the plexiglass, this right here, that's plexiglass. I have my speaker, a strobe, and an RGB flasher hidden behind the plexiglass. Now again, launching in the Simpsons pinball party. If I put a coin in, you can see the strobes there. You can also see the adjustable LEDs. We're gonna press start. And again, I do have the KL25Z board, so I have my nudge, my tilt. This is a thing of beauty. You know. There you go. Shaker motor just went off. Beautiful. And again, nudging now is just a thing of beauty now. Awesome. Now again, like I mentioned, I could turn off my solenoids and still game at night. Again, when you have a three-year-old now, trying to get some games in at night is a little tough. But as you can see, all of the flashes are still active along with my shaker motor. So there's the R, you can see the, the, the police light there. Ah, come on. There it is, he's trying to get that couch multi. Oh, I just missed it. <laughs> Oh, still up there. Nah. But yes, as you can see, awesome, love it, can't get enough of it. Color DMD, not all tables have color DMD, but that's a big thing. Again, third screen, 22 inch DMD, you have your full DMD image in the rear along with the DMD, and obviously the analog plunger, you can't see it there. That is all there. Awesome. Now again, the biggest thing about 10 point is that you could adjust the incline to give the table more realism slash layback. That right now is set up correctly for this specific table. Sadly though, and you might argue Yoshikan, you really have to adjust each table per table. That's over 300 tables. So I'm, it's a slow process is basically what I'm getting at. But as you can see, you can see the address while these going, you kind of see the strobe in the background. This is its final form. Now, the biggest thing in all honesty, the biggest surprise is I wasn't planning, I had no intentions of ever updating my V-Pin. If you asked me, they had, if you asked me six months ago, hey Vic, are you gonna like upgrade your V-Pin? No, I have no intentions to upgrade it. But my V-Pin, my 50 inch QNED, keep that in mind. My 50 inch Samsung, I did upgrade it to a 50 inch QNED. That was 120 hertz display. It just fit snug slash a good replacement. You know, I didn't have to cut, recut the cabinet. Um, I had the 50 inch QNED uh, TV in my build. And ever since I got 
my real Jersey Jack pinball machines, I actually could not enjoy my V-Pin anymore. It, it, it hit a point where I would go play my Jersey Jacks, I would come, I would load up my virtual pin, and within, no joke, about four or five minutes of playing, I would turn it off. And I was like, I can't do it. This is no longer enjoyable. And it's not the fact that it's virtual pinball. It was the fact that the 50 inch QNED, the cabinet, and I'm gonna say it because of the 50 inch QNED, meaning the actual screen size, the cabinet size, was too big for my liking. I'll go more in depth and in detail on the next video, but again, if you asked me six months ago, was I ever gonna upgrade my V-Pin? I had no intentions of upgrading it. Then I got those two bad boys over there. I came back to V-Pin and I just literally, I threw my hands up and I was like, I no longer enjoy it. There's, this story goes a little bit more in depth and you'll just have to stay tuned for the next video because I will definitely word vomit on that. But all in all now, this right now, I had this complete done. I've been playing this for about, I would say about three weeks now. I even started, restarted the bi-week tables. I've been playing Big Buck Hunter and I'm enjoying it. The V-Pin is back and I am enjoying every second of it now. Again, I'm trying to keep this short and sweet. It is just an overview video. So on that note, the Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party 2.0 is officially complete. The V-Pin is back and I am enjoying it now to the fullest. Love it, now I love it, I love it. <laughs>